Somi Asanto Sen, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Thank you, Jonathan. I'm glad to be here with you. Yeah, I really appreciate you joining me. You're joining us from Frankfurt, Germany. So it's evening there, it's morning here in Utah. Uh, it's a pleasure to have an opportunity to talk with you today. And we're gonna be focusing on your area of expertise, which is around digital HR transformation and people analytics. And we're gonna be exploring those topics and what that all means for the world of work and the future of work. As we get started, I wanted to share uh, some of Samia Sento's bio with everybody. Samia Sento Sen is an advisor and leader in digital HR workforce transformation technologies and analytics. He has more than 18 years of experience in this aspiring area together with HRIS implementations, digital HR strategy and transformation, organizational change, use of new technologies, research and thought leadership across North America, Europe, and the Asia Pacific for large and mid-sized companies. Somia ranks among the top global influencers and thought leaders in HR technology, transformation, and people analytics, and also is a well-known keynote speaker. As an entrepreneur, he's the founder of the management advisory firm, People Conscience Based in Frankfurt, Germany. He is the author of a highly popular book, Digital HR Strategy, Achieving Sustainable Transformation in the Digital Age, and co-author of The Sustainable Organization, A Paradigm for a Fairer Society. A uh, tremendous background, and, and I really appreciate all the expertise that you're bringing to the table uh, as you join me in this conversation today. Thank you. And is there anything else you would like to share with listeners by way of background or personal context before we dive on into the conversation? Yeah, I think Jonathan, you have covered it pretty well. So like a very crisp and a very concrete bio on my side. I'm really, as I mentioned, like happy to join here with your podcast and um, like um, the interesting thing is my name is very unique. Like if somebody types on your stuff in Google, it's only me in the world, whole world. So that's <laughs> so that's the easy one. So uh, people can easily contact me and I'm available in LinkedIn and they can find me anywhere like easy. Perfect, perfect. Well, let me start by asking you a general kind of personal question. And that is how did you find yourself landing in this area, in this field of, of digital transformation, uh, digital HR, uh, and in all of those related areas. So yeah, so let me review. Like, so I have a technology background. Like, I've done my master's in computer, and I spent a long years with um, consulting company, like you know, working with um, solution like uh, enterprise resource planning or HIS implementations for several big customers around the world. And uh, what I feel from that that time, like it's it's always a big challenge because especially when you talk. Um, take the respect from the HR, you know, from the HR function compared to other functions, it's always a big challenge in terms of uh, when you say from the um, IT perspective, when you say from the digital perspective, because HR itself is also a cost center for overall the organization. So, so there is a not many interest to invest a lot in terms of you know, from the uh, IT investment. And, and on the other hand, like HR is very much process driven. You know, so they're not very much, if you see from the, most of the process, we are changing definitely. But if you see from the past, most of the processes are very much like dedicated to the, the governance in terms of um, uh, their interoperability and how they work, you know, and especially lead from the compliance perspective, lead from the, like, uh, from, from the regular operation perspective and not from anything from the experience perspective from the HR customer who the, the, the major one is the employees you know and the managers the leaders so that's definitely lack a big thing you know and then in the last few years when the digital transformation coming into the space you know not only HR from everywhere so I see a huge opportunity for organizations including the HR you know to team time into the space you know and coming from that background, I can totally see how it's transforming. And I, 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 I'm actually helping a lot of organizations and leaders to drive that into that into this group. Well, yeah, that's wonderful. And thank you for sharing a little bit of that background and why it's it's so important, you know, to think be thinking about digital transformation, not just in HR, but across the organization. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm curious what you've seen, you know, over the past decade. Uh, digital transformation isn't necessarily a brand new thing. It's been around for a while. People have been talking about it. HR information systems, HR analytics, those aren't brand new. It's been around for a while, but it's it's certainly picked up steam 
Uh, and and uh, it's more prevalent today than it was certainly a decade ago, even five years ago. So what what are some of the major trends that you've seen in the space and how has it shifted over the last decade? If you talk about the last decade, I think, as I mentioned, like HRIS is not new. So like um, many of those companies and organizations have HRIS and solution from like recruitment, learning solutions, are there definitely there for a long time. But everything is like evolving, you know, in a different way. Like uh, focusing more on the experience piece, you know, which is uh, experience from the employee, experience from the customer, centricity from the HR. So that is the biggest evolution that is happening, you know, for the last uh, uh, one decade, you know, if we see. And a huge growth also in the area like people analytics, like analytics plays a huge role today in, in, in I think all the business functions, so does for HR. So I remember like um, I actually um, joined uh, in the analytic work stream, I think seven, eight years back in one of the companies been with diving into like, like um, business warehouse or business intelligence, how we can use the data from also people data. So it's, it's very like uh, immature at that time in most of the organization. But if I see now, I think it's mature enough because now people can see like the value of using analytics in the space, not only for the HR, but actually when you deal with people data, it can resolve a lot of business problem related to uh, which leaders are facing, you know, whether it's a talent acquisition or talent development or, uh, the talent retentions, that's the biggest one, but definitely there are more consecutive in terms of organization changes, transformations, and all those things. So the huge implications are there from the analytics, which is used um, by many organizations now. So HR, like if I see like HR analytics, the people analytics become already a key functions for most of them. And if you think from the technology point of view, like HR is definitely there, but there is also a huge um, flow of new HR innovations, you know, like using of um, like AI based tools in learning or recruitment is a huge implication. Like we have seen a growth of like numerous growth in the startups in this area of recruitment and learning. We have seen, you know, like we are evolving good in terms of uh, making the process more, you know, agile in terms of um, from the HR perspective and provide better experience to the employees and managers. And, and that's, that's awesome. And, and that's it's still growing. It, it's still evolving, I would say. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that evolution is continuing to happen. And it's clear, if, if it wasn't clear five or even 10 years ago, if it wasn't clear that uh, HR technologies in digital HR was going to be important. It's it's crystal clear now, and with so many organizations moving workers to a virtual environment uh, and uh, a distributed workforce, I think it's even more essential than it ever was in the past. So clearly, digital having a digital HR strategy is important for the modern organization. It's going to be even more essential for uh, the future of work and future organizations. Uh, but what do you see as some of the biggest current challenges with the transformations that organizations are trying to face? Recognizing that there's always a learning curve, there's always bumps and bruises along the way, but you know, a lot of organizations have been thrust into this transformation over the past year, uh, whether they liked it or not, whether they were inclined to move as quickly at, you know, as they were forced to or not, it's been happening. So what have been the biggest challenges associated with that? So I, I see that there are multiple challenges, but the biggest challenge is that um, the organizations lack, most of the time the organizations lack the right strategy. You know? so, and sometimes the strategy has been misplaced or you know, misinterpreted with uh, the operational effectiveness. You know? Because you know, like having a new system or having a better system in place you know, to, to making all the, your manual process into digitalized, so this is, this is not only a part of the key digitalization approach for any business function or overall organizations, right? Because this is there from the like long, long decades. Like we are doing this from long decades. If there's somebody who's working in IT environment, so this these things we are doing, like when we are implementing enterprise resource planning, you know, like two even two decades before. Like that's the main objective, like how we can decrease the cost, how we can make process effective. This is there, so this is not new. So the major thing is the digitalization is like how you change also the people mindset, you know, towards not only using digital tools, but also working effectively in terms of cross collaborations, in terms of uh, making um, like uh, automized, automate, um, automated the process to make your time free for the work, which makes add, add more value, like adding more creativity, more innovation into the companies. 
So those are the biggest challenge, which I think when transformation coming around, because if you see like most of the digital transformation projects are focusing on implementing good solution, you know, good technology in the piece, you know, and then uh, lacking the, um, and then don't, don't taking those pieces, which is very important in terms of changing from the mindsets, changing from the organization culture, changing from the <clears throat> aspect of the employee, or the customer experience, which is very much lacking in those space. And those are the important elements and ha everything have to be combined together. Then you can re really achieve a sustainable way to transform. Them as well. Yeah, yeah. And certainly digital transformation, well, any transformation, any organizational change is, is going to be difficult. Um, there's no doubt about it. And people are resistant to change. And that's even, you know, when it's a relatively simple change. So when you're talking about systems and processes and technologies and adopting and adapting um, to, the, to those new uh, technologies and then leveraging them for your organizational and HR strategies, you know, that's, that's some major change. That's some major uh, shifts that have to occur in the mindsets and the capabilities and the skill sets of the people within an organization. So it's no wonder that it, it's a ch it's an ongoing challenge for organizations trying to go through th this HR digital transformation. Uh, I'm a professor. At my university is in the middle. It, you know, one of the major things that we talk about constantly from a strategic organizational uh, standpoint is the digital transformation that's occurring mm -hmm. across the university, not just in the HR space, but in all aspects okay. of the organization. And, you know, if that's happening and if, if it's such a prevalent part of the ongoing conversation, the, stra the strategic vision and mission of the organization moving into the future um, at a university, you know, it's going to be important uh, in corporations that are usually a little bit more fast moving and quickly adapting to the yeah. marketplace. Uh, so, you know, I think that's, that's really important to think about. And for any listener uh, who, you know, if you're in an organization you know that this is important. You know that you need to be doing it, but maybe you don't know really know where to start, uh, or you don't know how to get people on board. Um, what would you say to them? What like what are some of the first steps that can be taken as you're trying to help move start start the ball rolling and get your organization moving towards digital transformation? I think I always um, prefer to suggest like start with the problem, right? So start with the business problem, like and the business case like where your business and company uh, wants to go, you know, from there, whether you want to change your own business model, are you really looking forward for a different way to going forward? That's the biggest things to start with, you know. So once we have this clarified, it's easy to access, access um, you know, to what are the next uh, priorities could be, you know, and that's the important piece because now the world is changing so fast and there's so many changes across every, every different sector, industry, you know, and also the changes like with the pandemic, which is also creating a huge noise and also challenges for the organizations. I think it's very important also to set the priorities, right? priorities at the right time, because none of the organizations can do everything at the same time. Though, although many of them are trying, but it's not easy. So you know, setting up priorities is very important here, you know, and then have the, have a framework in place and then build, this, uh, build up with the priorities and set the right strategy. You know, from the, your short-term strategy, your mid-term strategy, and maybe a long-term strategy at the end, and so that you can have a direction to go forward. And that's the very important key piece, which I, which many of the organizations lack, because building a strategy and roadmap is also a key challenge. Because organizations, many of the organizations I've seen, like they try to look what is available in the, in a, from the external point of view, like in a go go for a model which is already there and used by other organizations. I would always rather ask and um, advise to, you know, to see your own organizations and if needed, create your own model or framework, you know, which fits you, you know, because it doesn't like one model doesn't fit all. So that's definitely the key point aspect there. And uh, if you clear with that, I think that's easier to plan your transformation, you know, than hiring the right people, see where are the right ch biggest challenges there in terms of maybe hiring, having the right people in stage then maybe having, not having the capabilities and infrastructure. So then you can also plan your budget in a way because cost is definitely a big factor also because a huge uh, amount of investment is there in most of them when you do some innovation project or 
transformation of the project. So you have to have to plan about your cost effectiveness. So, so all these are definitely important. And when you really set a strategy in a better way, Way, you can really manage in a good way as well you know and that's a very important key aspect here when you really start with the transformation you know start with your own challenge not just relying on what is in the current trends but rather your own yeah that's that's a some great advice and i think there really is a temptation for organizations and for leaders to just hop on the late the bandwagon the latest trends um and looking at industry and looking at best practices to try to inform and shape the direction you want to take, there's value in that, of course. But just jumping on the trends is probably not going to suit you well. And uh, your organization's unique. So even if other organizations are being very successful with a particular package or software or a particular approach, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work for you. So you can't sidestep um, or you know find a shortcut um, to, to that transformation. You have to go through the, the difficult process of, of having those conversations. And like you said, figuring out really what your organization needs, where the gaps are and, and what might be able to help fill those gaps, having those conversations, those strategic discussions is going to be super important, unique to your organization, just like any other strategy or any other approach uh, that you might be uh, wanting to take another another point I've seen I want to mention it here because I've seen in many organizations like I've seen like within organizations there are multiple initiatives from the digital perspective you know so I don't see like many of their functions are working cross as a cross function unit or cross collaborating to each other so I've seen also like a lot of organizations saying like we have different initiative one by marketing team one by our digital innovation hub we have our HR different finance different so this is also a huge challenge at the end of organizations because it's bundled up huge cost and we can see like it has been seen like a lot of the work are actually done in a silo and also repetitive, you know, they're doing the same work in a different work and different area, and not only in the function, but also if you talk about global organizations, this is same has been seen when the, this has been initiative by a country is doing different countries is doing different initiative and not aligned on one single strategy. And this actually leads to a huge um, amount of increase in the cost and efforts and actually not a good direction for the organization. I think, and that's also one of the biggest thing which is ignoring transformation project. They don't cross a line within the, like globally or regionally, like wherever it's applicable, rather than, you know, start it by their own. You know, and this is something could be very risky. Yeah, yeah, that's another really good point. And, and you bring up something I think that's super vital, whether we're talking about digital transformation or any sort of organizational change, is that if we have, initiatives that are siloed and we're not working in cross-functional teams and we're not getting out of those silos, we're, we're going to have all sorts of inefficiencies. We're going to have all sorts of duplication of effort. It's a, a huge waste of time and resources uh, when we're not coordinating and collaborating more tightly. So we do, we have to get out of the silos. I, I get it. It's hard. Um, people like their, their niches, their areas of expertise. People get defensive people get you know boundary maintenance and people want to like control their little area i understand that's difficult to break that down but to the extent we can get past the silos and we can involve people across the organization in these large scale changes again regardless of whether we're talking about h hr digital transformation or not you know I, I think that's what we really need to go for and we need to we need to work towards creating that kind of a culture that kind of a mindset uh with our people so, so let's let's uh, shift gears just a little bit and talk now a little bit more about um, people analytics uh, because clearly uh, digital transformation there's many benefits to it uh, and HR uh, digital HR has lots of benefits. One of the nice benefits is it can help you produce a lot of performance data and other uh, data that can be utilized in order to better understand your people, your your workflows, what's going well, what's not. Um, talk to us a little bit more about the current, um, the current state of people analytics and kind of where we see that taking us to be able to drive more productive and effective organizations in the future. Yes, <clears throat> I, think, I think it's very pretty clear, like data-driven function, any data-driven function is highly effective in terms of making better decisions, right? So, and the same for 
uh, HR and because uh, not only for HR, but also like if we talk about people data, it takes, uh, it's bring you like the right decision also for the managers and the leaders because they are at, at the end, the manage their talent, you know, or manage their team. So I think if you talk about the people data, like whether it's from the person and like your performance data or your learning data or your absence data, like you can gather that and you can build an insight, which is, which can really solve your big challenge, what you're really facing with your talent. It can really take a better decision with a decision with a you know data driven decision because what happened also with this people data in the past if I compare with the past a lot of the decision is made uh, based on assumption you know and based on the cases which is the cases coming you know so now if we talk about when you talk about data when you have a like flow of data you have your platform there you can see you can take a faster decision. But, um, but you can make an effective decision, which makes sense. But on the other hand, I have also seen some of the resistance to use people analytics because there is a confusion that um, uh, using of people analytics can actually uh, lead like uh, to uh, the human, uh, the hu human are not taking the decision, which is a wrong part. Because I always say like, is, is, um, um, analytics should be used, uh, you know, uh, to making the decision better, but it doesn't imply that a, a system or algorithm or a, a robot or whatever you call as, as part of AI um, take a decision for you. So this is not something which is um, meaningful. And this is not something I think most of the organization is, tends to go, but which is, I see as a resistance, people are afraid of using data. Okay, we don't want machines to take decisions. But this is not the fact. So I think that's that's awareness and um, should be there within the people, you know, and especially I've seen this is, has been seen in HR functions because uh, HR, most of the HR peoples are not from the STEM background. So they lack those efficiency in terms of understanding technology, whereas like technology work together with human beings, you know. So, so that's there, that's resistance is there, but I think at the end, it's a big benefit to everyone. Yeah, I completely agree. Data-driven decisions are important throughout the organization. And again, not just related to people strategy and, and HR issues, but all issues. Certainly that applies to HR. And just because you know people might not be as comfortable with, um, with HR technologies or with the analytics um, skill sets, that doesn't mean we shouldn't utilize them. And it's it's certainly not, uh, I think it's a logical fallacy to jump towards, we can't use people analytics in HRIS because we're taking the people out of HR. And, you know, I, I, I read these articles and I hear people talking yeah. about this. I'm like, ah, there's a point there. Like we need to keep humanity in organizations for sure. But that's not what you're arguing. You're not arguing for take, removing the humanity from business yeah. or from how we treat our people. It's it's being able to make better, more informed decisions, which is to everyone's benefit, I believe. And really that that gets me into the last kind of point I wanted us to, to explore together, you know, even if just briefly today. And that is, what does all this mean for the future of work? We, we know that work is evolving, more distributed workforce. We could go, I could go on and on about some of those drivers and some of the shifts that are happening in the workplace. But in relation to digital HR and transformation, what do you see? Um, how is that influencing the future of work? I think the major challenge or change in the future of work, you already mentioned the hybrid work model. You know, so the working model is going to change for sure. It's already changed, but I think it, even in post pandemic world, it will be definitely going to impact a huge for the organizations, most of the organizations at least. You know, the, when you say like changing in working model means also adding more flexibility and you know, a new way of working in terms of that. Like, I think everyone can recognize like when somebody working from home or working from an office or a dedicated space is totally different, you know. And, and that's a totally different environment, a new way of handling things. But on the other hand, it has some pros and cons, so some advantage, but also disadvantage as well, because that's why we talk like hybrid mode could be a best solution. So definitely working model is one area where you can see that uh, new ways of working can change. The second point I will mention, like, uh, which we also discussed during this podcast, like, you know, like we have to move from a bureaucracy world to human across. I think that's, that's more effective, you know, so to working in a more collaborative way, removing the silos and, and that's, 
it is a huge change in the culture, also change of new way of working, you know, because the old working style and um, working habits doesn't going to fit into this. So this is also changing, like, and this actually going to help organization in terms of the relevant transformation to achieve, but also a good culture where people feel more secure, trusted, you know, and they are like more uh, like flexible in terms of sharing thoughts, you know, bring innovation. So this is definitely another key aspect, which is I see, which is coming from this change in the world, which is coming definitely um, added advantage with digital uh, piece. And the last but not the least is uh, about the skills, upskilling and learning, which is also a very key aspect of any like future of work or any organizations today. And I think that's a, also a huge, um, I would say, not in a good shape to say most of the organizations like, like managing the skills and then managing the competencies based on that you plan your workforce, like which work, like and plan your like workforce mobility or workforce planning. So all these are definitely not integrated in most of the organizations today. You know, and then which upskilling is needed, I you know which which skills are going to obsolete, which skills are coming new, like what type of training we have to need to provide, how we can develop uh, the employees, what are the career aspirations for the employees, all those things are there, but it's not integrated somehow. So this is something which is huge um, going to change because the, the organization have to apply this, you know, uh, moving towards more like we call like skill based gap. Career, you know, more skill-based career or skill-based talent management rather than old typical challenge talent management based on uh, their own uh, different curve. So this is a huge change which is going to happen also with the organizations to talk about future work. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. Well, it has been a real pleasure talking with you. The time has flown by and we've only scratched the surface. I'm sure there's so much more we could talk about and you are welcome back on the podcast anytime. I'd love to continue to pick your brain about uh, current trends and, and future shifts and, and things related to that. Uh, thank you for joining me today. Before we close, I did want to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can get connected with you, find out more about your business uh, and anything you'd, else you'd like to say by way of a uh, final word on the topic. Thank you, Jonathan. I think um, I mentioned like like for me to contact me is very easy. Like you can find the best um, easy ways to contact me via LinkedIn because that's the way I can easily reach and I, I use as a LinkedIn as a more like my uh, personal contact uh, point or database. So it, it will be helpful um, like for easy to contact me and anytime like you can also see my articles and my book also digital HR strategy which I mentioned about a lot of things which we have talked today, you know, so about the future of work, about the digitalization of HR, uh, where it's going. So a lot of things has been explained there. So you can always grab a copy of that. And um, looking forward to know and learn and share more uh, in the future, because that's my key <laughs> motto for life, uh, sharing and learning. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I really encourage listeners to reach out, get connected with Samia Santo and find out more about what he can do for you. Check out his book. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week.